Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. This is one of those movies that doesn't even need an introduction. I don't need to say anything about it. All you gotta do is look at the fucking cover. If you didn't laugh your ass off looking at this, then call the insane asylum, they've been looking for you. This is Zeus and Roxanne. From the brilliant director of The NeverEnding Story 2, here's a story about a dog and a dolphin who befriend one another. How can you even say that with a straight face? A dog and a dolphin. Was there no room for a pony and a chipmunk to join the fun? And to make sure there's absolutely nothing redeemable about this movie, they added Steve Gutenberg. What a cherry on top. So, for all of those who always wanted to see Flipper meets Lassie, GET SOME FUCKING HELP! For the rest of us, this is Zeus and Roxanne. So we open up with a pretty sunrise over the ocean. Yeah, This movie sucks! You got totally screwed! Did you even see the poster? And you paid money for this! <laughs> wow! This movie wastes no time sucking, does it? It simply jumps right into the heart of what's going to be absolutely horrible about this premise. <laughs> so, dog likes dolphin. How touching and creepy. But surely there's some human characters to balance out the insipidness of the story. Hey, I said human. That's Steve Gutenberg. Oh, dog germs. Want to smell some dinner? Breakfast. I knew that. Mm. You've been up all night again, huh? Mm. Sorry, it's just that uh, I've been working on this melody and... What, did he marry this kid or something? He's cooking for him, he's trying to be responsible for him. Who knew owning a Steve Gutenberg would be so much work? So, uh, what's in this burrito? Three fried beans, onions, jalapenos, peanut butter, mozzarella cheese, pineapple chunks. Just... Good boy, yes, eat it up. Oh, thank you. Oh, good, you finished yours. I'll go get you another one. So this is Terry and his son, Jordan. They have a summer home in Key West and live right next door to a marine biologist named Mary Beth and her two daughters, Judith and Nora. The only downside is that their dog, Zeus, seems to keep getting into trouble over at Mary Beth's house. I'm so sorry. I'm Terry Barnett. Mary Beth. Mary Beth. Excuse me, my forced, wide-eyed whimsicalness seems to follow me to every performance. Me, Terry. You? Judith? You? Nora. Uh... Oh, wait! You forgot to make that charming or clever. So while Gutenberg agrees to keep a closer eye on Zeus, he writes jingles for his next commercial. That's right, he writes jingles for commercials. Who knew that could pay for a summer home in Key West? <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me that internet reviewers can make a living making fun of movies. Gutenberg, keeping a close eye on their dog to make sure that no danger may befall him. Idiot. Dolphin! Dolphin! I'm a dog who's horny for a dolphin! Don't ask me why, I just want a dolphin! Dolphin! So we see that Mary Beth is trying to get a grant for her research on a dolphin named Roxanne. The only problem is she has competition with... I didn't know I ever had one. Da! The mummy! Let me know if you change your mind. I can't respect you trying to kill Brendan Fraser, but you leave Mary Beth alone! So our species-confused canine follows Mary Beth through extreme measures to get on board and see Roxanne. By the sequel rights of Darkman. So our two scientists discover that Zeus is on board and decide there's nothing they can do but continue on to Roxanne. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. So they finally come across the chipper Roxanne as Zeus wants to get a closer look at her. Okay, this is getting scary. 
Zeus obviously has a sick obsession that is probably not very healthy. Don't believe me? Then check out his porn! So when it looks like their research is over, they pull up the anchor and take off. Yes! 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 That was awesome! Let's see that again! Thank you for that movie, I really needed that. <laughs> okay, continue to suck now. just punched a shark in the fucking mouth, are you fucking serious? Good lord, who knew a dolphin punch was so deadly? Why couldn't we get those things at Pearl Harbor? They would have saved the day. Oh, we shall bomb the harbor and- Oh my god, giant dolphin! <laughs> ah! Fear the dolphin punch, it knocks out sharks. Dolphin punch! Oh my gosh, come here! Get the camera. I have to document how stupid this moment is. So it turns out not only do the dog and the dolphin like each other, but they can also communicate with each other. <laughs> so Mary Beth thinks she's a shoe in now for the grant. But first she has to ask Gutenberg's son, Jordan, if it's alright to keep using him. Wow. Did you do all these? Yeah. That one's gonna be the cover for my dad's opera score. So let me get this straight. We have a dog who has a strange obsession with a dolphin, and a boy who has a strange obsession with a dog. This is like a psychiatric case from Dr. Doolittle. It might be really interesting to get the two together, Zeus and Roxanne, and just see how things sort of go from there. The son agrees as they all go out to sea to watch the two communicate. <laughs> doing out there with that dog? I'll tell you what she's doing. She's trying to steal my grunt. Well, that's just not gonna happen. No, sir. I was just establishing that I was the villain of this picture. D d did you get that? D did you get that? that I was the villain of this picture? Because I am. Because I don't want her to get her grunt. No, sir. Villain. So we see Mary Beth's daughters get in trouble for trespassing, but luckily, Rebel Without a Career drops by to talk with the cop. He seems to convince the cop to let the girls go as he quite illegally drives all of them away on his motorcycle. This, of course, leads to more quirky, awkward talk from our romantic leads. She's asking him out. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Right. It was a teenage... What? Hey! What? What? Uh, what? Uh, what? Hey! What? what? Bad montage off the port bow! So while Jordan takes a picture of my nightmare for the next two weeks, Mary Beth and Gutenberg seem to hit it off quite well. By the movie standards. For the rest of us, it's like watching a bad episode of Blind Date. This, uh, this Claude guy. Do you see him? Every day. He's a head honcho at the Institute. Mm. I used to be his assistant, mm -hmm. but we had a Parting of the ways. Would it be tactless to ask over what? Third party. Oh, I'm, I'm, I apologize. Never mind. I, I didn't. I didn't. A dolphin. So after Gutenberg and Mary Beth make it to first base, we see our villain trying to sneak a peek at her research. <laughs> what is he doing with his lips? What? He turned a beaker from the Muppets for a second? <laughs> So he escapes and sees if he can try dolphin communication with other animals. But sadly, none of them have the sick, disturbing love that Zeus and Roxanne seem to feel for each other. Hey, speaking of which, we haven't seen much of them, have we? I mean, we're at the hour mark here and we've only had two scenes with the animals together. One was only ten minutes and the other was under five. They should have just called this movie Gutenberg and Mary Steenburgen look-alike. That would have been more accurate. Uh-oh. 
drift nets. They kill thousands of dolphins every year. Come on, let's lead Roxanne out of here. Yeah, we don't want her to get caught in those nets. Now, if a fucking shark comes along, that's okay. But if she gets caught in one of those nets, phew, it's all over. So after a few more dates, our lovebirds decide Gutenberg should move in with Mary Beth. But this leads to some issues as he starts thinking about his deceased wife. What are we doing this for? Are we doing this for us? Are we doing this for the Rockland Foundation? Are we doing it for the kids? All of the above. I don't know. I think you missed a line. You're supposed to say I'm having second thoughts, you're supposed to say why, and then you say, okay, you don't know. So, because Gutenberg doesn't know, he decides he wants to move away and take Zeus and Jordan with him. This leads to the most groundbreaking question that this movie, no, no, any movie has ever asked in the history of man. If a dog and a dolphin can get along, why can't our mom and his dad? Oh my god! It was so simple all this time! The dog and the dolphin! We must look to the dog and dolphin! Yes, quickly! Get me everybody in the world! They all need to hear this! If a dog and a dolphin can get along, why can't our mom and his dad? Yes, I know! Let them know! Let them all know. So after Gutenberg, Jordan, and Zeus finally move away, we see that Zeus spends most of his time watching- Oh, God. Really? Really, movie? This is what he spends his free time doing? Did he really learn how to change the channels until he found something with dolphins in it? Or is he just watching the all-ironic channel? Come on, Zeus. Hmm. Zeus, come on. I don't even get it. Why couldn't they just leave the dog? This makes no sense. A gigantic scientific breakthrough totally destroyed because Gutenberg doesn't know what he's looking for. Boo -hoo -hoo. But Zeus is a little more proactive as he decides to see there is beloved dolphin or nothing. <laughs> Goodbye, whole world! So Zeus literally travels all the way back to Mary Beth so that he can be with his beloved Roxanne again. So the kids talk to each other and devise a trick to get Gutenberg and Mary Beth talking to each other again. But unfortunately, our villain finds the dog and captures him, hoping to use him to find and communicate with Roxanne. Right. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Hmm, not a bad plan to sabotage the competition, but I like his other one better. Uh... Now that would be awesome! Now Roxanne is ours. No, Dr. Carver. Yours. We quit. Are you seriously telling me that kidnapping a dog to entrap a dolphin is your idea of unethical? So Gutenberg and Jordan fly back to Key West as it turns out his son has some very choice words about the situation. Zeus is an extremely extreme dog. That he is. He's also in love. An extreme emotion. Why don't you try it sometime, Dad? Oh, Gutenberg, nothing! Kid that takes pictures of his dog dressed as a frog? What? So as the bad guy tries to lure Roxanne in, we find that Roxanne is one step ahead of their game. <laughs> Dolphin punch! Wow, so people and sharks pose no threats to this dolphin. But if she comes across a tuna net, woo! And speaking of idiots who get caught in tuna nets, look, Mary Beth is an idiot getting caught in a tuna net. Yeah, apparently nets are dangerous to dolphins and really stupid marine biologists. You know what? It's still worth it. I love tuna too much. It's worth a few dead dolphins and marine biologists to get my tuna. If they're so smart, why didn't they see the net coming to begin with? Fuck the bastards, I want my tuna. So, in maybe one of the lamest ways to fix a situation... Damn, if I had installed that screen door like I originally wanted, none of this would have happened. So 
seeing how there's no friggin' scuba gear that she brought with her, it's up to Roxanne to find her and relay the message that she's in trouble. Look, I think she's trying to tell us something! Lobster people are invading the forest with blenders? Ninjas from another planet have stolen all the Earth's corn? Mary Beth is trapped right below us in a tuna net? That's it? Mary Beth is trapped right below us in a tuna net? Well, I better save her! I think she wants you to follow her. Uh, yeah, I think she also said bring an oxygen tank, you dumbass. Oh, hold on! I can't stay down here long, because I didn't bring an oxygen tank! Give me a knife! Whoop! Gotta go up again! You know, maybe I could save precious time if I just put on one of those oxygen tanks. Or maybe even brought one down for you to breathe through. But what do I know? I'm Steve Gutenberg. So he finally gets her out of the sub as the police drop by to see... What? Zeus hasn't trapped the bad guys in a net? Well, in all my years! Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> boy, Zeus! <laughs> Do, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids! Uh, uh. Oh, and that mangy dog! <laughs> oh, and, and a dolphin. This has been a weird week, hasn't it? So, of course, Gutenberg and Mary Beth decide to get back together and finally tie the knot. Wait! Sorry, they told me to bring this down here right away. Ah, the postman. Just like the old saying goes, nor rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor... wedding. It's the Grant! <laughs> right. oh, I mean, Mom? Oh, well, isn't this magical? I suppose only one other thing could possibly top off this day of whimsical delight. Of course! How else could this movie possibly end? There are rainbow sprinkled in syrup and unicorn farts that aren't as sappy as this fucking movie! This film is shit plain and simple! We don't see much of the dog and dolphin together, the romance is pretty bland, and none of it seems to have any surprises. It's just a safe film with an unusually safe premise, if not a totally insane premise. On top of that, if Zeus and Roxanne did have a relationship together, what would the kids look like? I don't know. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember it, so you don't have to. This is one of those movies that doesn't even need an introduction. I don't need to say anything about it. All you gotta do is look at the fucking cover. If you didn't laugh your ass off looking at this, then call the insane asylum, they've been looking for you. I'm gonna tally how many times he says, if you like this movie, you're insane. We're already at number one. This is Zeus and Roxanne. From the brilliant director of The NeverEnding Story 2, here's a story about a dog and a dolphin who befriend one another. How can you even say that with a straight face? A dog and a dolphin. Was there no room for a pony and a chipmunk to join the fun? And to make sure there's absolutely nothing redeemable about this movie, they added Steve Gutenberg. What a cherry on top. So, for all of those who always wanted to see Flipper meets Lassie, get some fucking help! Number two. I'll say this right here at the beginning. Just because a movie's concept is bad, doesn't mean the movie instantly will be. Imagine if Spider-Man, the comic book, movie, video games, whatever, never were liked because of the concept. Oh, some man is a spider and a man at the same time, and he shoots webs from his hands? What the hell? For the rest of us, this is Zeus and Roxanne. So we open up with a pretty sunrise over the ocean. Yeah! This movie sucks! You got totally screwed. Did you even see the poster? Did you pay money for this? This movie, if you couldn't tell, is rated PG, meaning it can appeal to children. You are about a 30 year old man. I don't think you were the targeted audience. Also, that's three. <laughs> This 
this movie wastes no time sucking, does it? So it's a dog waving to a dolphin. <laughs> it simply jumps right into the heart of what's going to be absolutely horrible about this premise. <laughs> So, dog likes dolphin. How touching and creepy. Creepy? But surely there's some human characters to balance out the insipidness of the story. Insipid means doll. You seem quite energetic about being angry about a dog and a dolphin being friends. If the movie really was boring, you probably wouldn't be getting all angry about it. Yawning, maybe, but not freaking out. Hey, I said human! That's Steve Gutenberg! Dog! Dog germs! Want to smell some dinner? Breakfast. I knew that. Mm. You've been up all night again, huh? Mm. Sorry, I just that uh, I've been working on this melody and... What, did he marry this kid or something? He's cooking for him, he's trying to be responsible for him. Who knew owning a Steve Gutenberg would be so much work? Do I have to explain this? <sighs> Fine. When parents are divorced and a kid is with one parent, the l possibly the lazy parent, the kid has to do some work to help keep the house afloat. Much more than he would have to if the parents worked together. So, uh, what's in this burrito? Three fried beans, onions, jalapenos, peanut butter, mozzarella cheese, pineapple chunks. Zeus! Good boy, you messed it up. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, good, you finished yours. I'll go get you another one. Remember target audience. I laughed when I watched it when I was seven years old. So this is Terry and his son Jordan. They have a summer home in Key West and live right next door to a marine biologist named Mary Beth and her two daughters, Judith and Nora. The only downside is that their dog Zeus seems to keep getting into trouble over at Mary Beth's house. I'm so sorry. I'm Terry Barnett. Mary Beth. Mary Beth. Excuse me, my forced, wide-eyed whimsicalness seems to follow me to every performance. It's what we call an awkward moment, Critic. An awkward moment. Me, Terry. You? Judith? You? Nora. Uh... Oh, wait! You forgot to make that charming or clever! I don't think you understand what a joke is. Not every movie has to be all action-y, you know. This scene wasn't that funny, I admit, but you're acting like they actually meant to do that. Purposely. Like in real life. So while Gutenberg agrees to keep a closer eye on Zeus, he writes jingles for his next commercial. That's right, he writes jingles for commercials. Who knew that could pay for a summer home in Key West? <laughs> next, you'll be telling me that internet reviewers can make a living making fun of movies. <laughs> Be careful, viewers. That was the first of many interspecial relationship jokes. Good old Gutenberg, keeping a close eye on their dog to make sure that no danger may befall him. Idiot. Dolphin! Dolphin! I'm a dog who's horny for a dolphin! Don't ask me why, I just want a dolphin! Dolphin! This movie, like I said, is rated PG. The dog is not horny for the dolphin. Just because it's a female dolphin does not mean that the dog is horny for the dolphin. Besides, if they were horny for each other and they wanted to be together, why is that such a problem? Homosexuals are accepted in today's society, so why not them if they loved each other? So we see that Mary Beth is trying to get a grant for her research on a dolphin named Roxanne. The only problem is she has competition with... I didn't know I ever had one. Ah! The mummy! Let me know if you change your mind. I can't respect you trying to kill Brendan Fraser, but you leave Mary Beth alone! So our species-confused knife. I'm only gonna say this one more time. Friendship does not equal sex. Follows Mary Beth through extreme measures to get on board and see Roxanne. By the sequel rights of Darkman. 
So our two scientists discover that Zeus is on board and decide there's nothing they can do but continue on to Roxanne. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. So they finally come across the chipper Roxanne as Zeus wants to get a closer look at her. Okay, this is getting scary. Zeus obviously has a sick obsession that is probably not very healthy. Don't believe me? Then check out his porn! Can you believe that some people actually believe what he's saying? So when it looks like their research is over, they pull up the anchor and take off. Yes! 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 That was awesome! Let's see that again! <laughs> oh my god! I can watch that a million times! Thank you for that movie, I really needed that. <laughs> okay, continue to suck now. I mean this in the lightest way possible, but Douglas Walker, are you on medication? Just punched a shark in the fucking mouth. Are you fucking serious? In Star Wars, they're able to go light speed. Are you serious? I mean, E equals MC squared. Come on. Good lord, who knew a dolphin punch was so deadly? Why couldn't we get those things at Pearl Harbor? They would have saved the day. Oh, we shall bomb the harbor and- Oh my god, giant dolphin! Assuming that a dolphin can jump that high. I'm gonna admit that my Star Wars comparison wasn't that great because that was a science fiction movie and this movie's much more realistic. However, it's still a movie. Ah! Fear the dolphin punch and knocks out sharks. Dolphin punch! Oh my gosh. Come here! Get the camera. I have to document how stupid this moment is. If you keep saying to yourself, it's just a movie, it's just a movie, no matter what movie it is, it's gonna be a lot worse. So it turns out not only do the dog and the dolphin like each other, but they can also communicate with each other. So Mary Beth thinks she's a shoe in now for the grant. But first she has to ask Gutenberg's son, Jordan, if it's alright to keep using him. Wow. Did you do all these? Yeah. That one's gonna be the cover for my dad's opera score. So let me get this straight. We have a dog who has a strange obsession with a dolphin, and a boy who has a strange obsession with a dog. More like photography. I mean, I can't see the other pictures that well, but I don't think that they all have Zeus on them. This is like a psychiatric case from Dr. Doolittle. It might be really interesting to get the two together, Zeus and Roxanne, and just see how things sort of go from there. The sun agrees as they all go out to sea to watch the two communicate. What is she doing out there with that dog? I'll tell you what she's doing. She's trying to steal my grunt. Well, that's just not going to happen. No, sir. I was just establishing that I was the villain of this picture. D d did you get that? D did you get that? that I was the villain of this picture? Because I am. Because I don't want her to get her grant. No, sir. Villain. So we see Mary Beth's daughters get in trouble for trespassing, but luckily Rebel Without a Career drops by to talk with the cop. He seems to convince the cop to let the girls go as he quite illegally drives all of them away on his motorcycle. This, of course, leads to more quirky, awkward talk from our romantic leads. Everything you have said pointed that Zeus and Roxanne were in love. And now you're saying the main romantic lead is Gutenberg and Mary Beth. She's asking him out. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Right. It was a what? Hey, what? What? Uh, what? Uh, I, what? Hey, what? 
Bad montage off the port bow! So while Jordan takes a picture of Too much time alone. my nightmare for the next two weeks, Mary Beth and Gutenberg seem to hit it off quite well. By the movie standards. For the rest of us, it's like watching a bad episode of Blind Date. This, uh, this Claude guy. Do you see him? Every day. He's a head honcho at the Institute. Mm. I used to be his assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know why the screen cuts off. I guess it's widescreen to full screen or something. But we had a parting of the ways. Would it be tactless to ask over what? Third party. Oh, I'm, I, I apologize. Never mind. I, I didn't. I didn't. A dolphin. You were talking about how the villain takes too long to talk about his grant, and yet at the same time, now you're talking too much about blind date. I mean, we got the joke. So after Gutenberg and Mary Beth make it to first base, we see I'm surprised you didn't complain about the kids' poker scene for ten minutes. See our villain trying to sneak a peek at her research. <laughs> what is he doing with his lips? What, they turned a beaker from the Muppets for a second? <laughs> My assumption is that he was mumbling inaudibly. So he escapes and sees if he can try dolphin communication with other animals. But sadly, none of them have the sick, disturbing love that Zeus and Roxanne seem to feel for each other. Hey, speaking of which, we haven't seen much of them, have we? I mean, we're at the hour mark here and we've only had two scenes with the animals together. One was only ten minutes and the other was under five. They should have just called this movie Gutenberg and Mary Steenburgen look-alike. That would have been more accurate. Remember that he said that. Uh-oh. Drift nets. Thousands of dolphins every year. Come on, let's lead Roxanne out of here. Yeah, we don't want her to get caught in those nets. Now if a fucking shark comes along, that's okay. But if she gets caught in one of those nets, phew, it's all over. So after a few more dates, our lovebirds decide Gutenberg should move in with Mary Beth. But this leads to some issues as he starts thinking about his deceased wife. What are we doing this for? Are we doing this for us? Are we doing this for the Rockland Foundation? Are we doing it for the kids? All of the above. I don't know. I think you missed a line. You're supposed to say I'm having second thoughts, you're supposed to say why, and then you say, okay, you don't know. Maybe Gutenberg means that he's not sure whether or not they really are doing it for all of the above. So, because Gutenberg doesn't know, he decides he wants to move away and take Zeus and Jordan with him. This leads to the most groundbreaking question that this movie, no, no, any movie has ever asked in the history of man. If a dog and a dolphin can get along, why can't our mom and his dad? Oh my god! It was so simple all this time! The dog and the dolphin! We must look to the dog and dolphin! Yes, quickly! Get me everybody in the world! They all need to hear this! If a dog and a dolphin can get along, why can't our mom and his dad? So he's talking to some guy, and then... Out of the phone comes the if a dog and a dolphin line. Logically, he would have played like some sound speaker right next to the phone, and the sound speaker would say the line, right? Because he's trying to tell him, not us, about that line. I mean, it's not like the person that he's talking to and the if a dog and a dolphin line sound wherever it came from, from the other side of the phone, are sharing the same phone, are they? Yes, I know! We let them know! Let them all know. content that you're working on is overly dramatic about such a small thing as well. For example, you're being overly dramatic about this movie. I could play to the vault all over again if you want me to. After Gutenberg, Jordan, and Zeus finally move away, we see that Zeus spends most of his time watching- oh god, really? Really movie this is what he spends his free time doing? Did he really learn how to change the channels until he found something with dolphins in it? Or is he just watching the all ironic channel? Come on, Zeus. Hmm. Zeus, come on. 
I don't even get it. Why couldn't they just leave the dog? This makes no sense. A gigantic scientific breakthrough totally destroyed because Gutenberg doesn't know what he's looking for. Boo hoo hoo. You yourself said it looked stupid. And now you're saying, oh, it's a scientific breakthrough. Hooray. You confuse me, critic. But Zeus is a little more proactive, as he decides it's either his beloved dolphin or nothing. Goodbye, cruel world! So Zeus literally travels all the way back to Marybeth so that he can be with his beloved Roxanne again. So the kids talk to each other and devise a trick to get Gutenberg and Mary Beth talking to each other again. But unfortunately, our villain finds the dog and captures him, hoping to use him to find and communicate with Roxanne. Right. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Hmm, not a bad plan to sabotage the competition, but I like his other one better. Now that would be awesome! I'm gonna ask you to stop doing that. Sure, the two characters are played by the same actor, but they're two different characters. Now Roxanne is ours. No, Dr. Carver. Yours. We quit. Are you seriously telling me that kidnapping a dog to entrap a dolphin is your idea of unethical? So Gutenberg and Jordan fly back to Key West as it turns out his son has some very choice words about the situation. Zeus is an extremely extreme dog. That he is. He's also in love. Oh, an extreme emotion. Why don't you try it sometime, Dad? Oh, Gutenberg, nothing. Kid that takes pictures of his dog dressed as a frog? What? So as the bad guy tries to lure Roxanne in, we find that Roxanne is one step ahead of their game. <laughs> Dolphin pop! How come you didn't say that that looked so fake? Wow, so people and sharks pose no threats to this dolphin. But if she comes across a tuna net, ooh. And speaking of idiots who get caught in tuna nets, look, Mary Beth is an idiot getting caught in a tuna net. Yeah, apparently nets are dangerous to dolphins and really stupid marine biologists. You know what? It's still worth it. I love tuna too much. It's worth a few dead dolphins and marine biologists to get my tuna. If they're so smart, why didn't they see the net coming to begin with? Fuck the bastards, I want my tuna. So, in maybe one of the lamest ways to fix a situation... Damn, if I had installed that screen door like I originally wanted, none of this would have happened. Not funny. So seeing how there's no friggin' scuba gear that she brought with her, it's up to Roxanne to find her and relay the message that she's in trouble. Look, I think she's trying to tell us something! Lobster people are invading the forest with blenders? Ninjas from another planet have stolen all the Earth's corn? Mary Beth is trapped right below us in a tuna net? To... That's it? Mary Beth is trapped right below us in a tuna net? Well, I better save her! I think she wants you to follow her. Uh, yeah, I think she also said bring an oxygen tank, you dumbass. Oh, hold on! I can't stay down here long, because I didn't bring an oxygen tank! Give me a knife! Critic, he went up for a knife. Whoop, gotta go up again! You know, maybe I could save precious time if I just put on one of those oxygen tanks. Or maybe even brought one down for you to breathe through. But what do I know? I'm Steve Gutenberg. Okay, now he went up for air. So he finally gets her out of the sub as the police drop by to see... What? Zeus has entrapped the bad guys in a net? Well, in all my years! Adam, <laughs> 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 boy, Zeus! <laughs> Do, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids! <laughs> oh, and that mangy dog! <laughs> oh, and, and, uh, dolphin. This has been a weird week, hasn't it? So, of course, Gutenberg and Mary Beth decide to get back together and finally tie the knot. Wait. 
Sorry, they told me to bring this down here right away. Ah, the postman. Just like the old saying goes, nor rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor... wedding. It's the Grant! <laughs> oh, I well, isn't this magical? I suppose only one other thing could possibly top off this day of whimsical delight. Of course! How else could this movie possibly end? There are rainbows sprinkled in syrup and unicorn farts that aren't as sappy as this fucking movie! This film is shit plain and simple! We don't see much of the dog and dolphin together. The you spent about a total of one-third of the video, which is about six minutes, complaining about how the dog and the dolphin are together. And then at the very end, you turn around and say, Oh, the dog and the dolphin aren't together so much. Romance is pretty bland, and none of it seems to have any surprises. It's just a safe film with an unusually safe premise, if not a totally insane premise. On top of that, if Zeus and Roxanne did have a relationship together, what would the kids look like? I don't know. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. Just like CGS 01's Shadow the Hedgehog review, this video completely smashed what credibility I had in you. Even if I didn't watch the movie, or if I didn't like it as a kid, I probably still would have made the commentary. All you do is make bestiality jokes every single turn, and then at the very end you say, Oh, there isn't enough bestiality. Seriously. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. This is one of those movies that doesn't even need an introduction. I don't need to say anything about it. All you gotta do is look at the fucking cover. If you didn't laugh your ass off looking at this, then call the insane asylum, they've been looking for you! I'm gonna tally how many times he says, if you like this movie, you're insane. We're already at number one. I think that was supposed to be a joke. I don't really think that Walker actually believes that. This is Zeus and Roxanne! I was disappointed when the critic didn't go, Roxanne! Roxanne! So, for all of those who always wanted to see Flipper meets Lassie, get some fucking help! Number two. I'll say this right here at the beginning. Just because a movie's concept is bad, doesn't mean the movie instantly will be. Imagine if Spider-Man, the comic book, movie, video games, whatever, never were liked because of the concept. Oh, so man is a spider and a man at the same time, and he shoots webs from his hands? What the hell? Are you trying to compare a concept of a man getting superpowers and using those powers to stop evil to a rather odd interspecies relationship that seems more like a parody of a kid's film? You know, there's concept, and then there's execution. For the rest of us, this is Zeus and Roxanne. So we open up with a pretty sunrise over the ocean. Yeah! This movie sucks! You got so totally screwed! Did you even see the poster? Did you pay money for this? This movie, if you couldn't tell, is rated PG. <gasps> meaning it can appeal to children. You are about a 30-year-old man. I don't think you were the targeted audience. Also, that's three. Just because a movie is appealing to children does not mean that it's exempt from critical analysis. But surely there's some human characters to balance out the insipidness of the story. Insipid means dull. You seem quite energetic about being angry about a dog and a dolphin being friends. If the movie really was boring, you probably wouldn't be getting all angry about it. Yawning, maybe, but not freaking out. Hmm, which would I rather see? Someone yelling and ranting in a comedic fashion, or somebody yawning for an entire 20 minutes? Wanna smell some dinner? Breakfast. I knew that. Mm. You've been up all night again, huh? Mm. Sorry, I just that uh... I've been working on this melody and... What, did he marry this kid or something? He's cooking for him, he's trying to be responsible for him? Who knew owning a Steve Gutenberg would be so much work? Do I have to explain this? Um... I don't see why you would, but okay. Fine. When parents are divorced and a kid is with one parent, the l possibly the lazy parent, the kid has to do some work to help keep the house afloat. Much more than he would have to if the parents were together. I think he was trying out this thing called, um, 
Jokes? Mary Beth. Mary Beth. Excuse me, my forced wide-eyed whimsicalness seems to follow me to every performance. It's what we call an awkward moment, critic. An awkward moment. He was making fun of Steve Gutenberg's acting, Shadow Star. Steve Gutenberg's acting. Me, Terry. You? Judith? You? Nora. Uh... Oh, wait, you forgot to make that charming or clever. I don't think you understand what a joke is. I honestly don't think that you do. Not every movie has to be all action-y, you know. Where do you get the impression that he wanted the movie to be all action-y? He just pointed out that what Gutenberg just said wasn't clever or witty. This scene wasn't that funny, I admit. That was the point that he was trying to make. But you're acting like they actually meant to do that. Purposely. Like in real life. Like in real life? What are you talking about? He was just saying that the scene wasn't really funny. Be careful, viewers. That was the first of many interspecial relationship jokes. Those are the worst kinds of jokes you can make! Dolphin! Dolphin! I'm a dog who's horny for a dolphin! Don't ask me why, I just want a dolphin! DOLPHIN! This movie, like I said, is rated PG. The dog is not horny for the dolphin. Just because it's a female dolphin does not mean that the dog is horny for the dolphin. Calm down. It's a joke. Don't be so angry about it. Besides, if they were horny for each other and they wanted to be together, why is that such a problem? Well, if you look at their ecosystems and their anatomy- Why am I explaining this to you? Homosexuals are accepted in today's society, so why not them, if they loved each other? This is the first time I ever used a nostalgia critic clip in one of my commentaries. <laughs> you do know there's a difference between two humans being in love with each other and two animals from different species being in love with each other, right? So are species confused canine- I'm only gonna say this one more time. Friendship does not equal sex. But it's not friendship, it's love! So when it looks like their research is over, they pull up the anchor and take off. Yes! 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 That was awesome! Let's see that again! Oh my god, I can watch that a million times! <laughs> Thank you for that movie, I really needed that. <laughs> okay, continue to suck now. I mean this in the lightest way possible, but Douglas Walker, are you on medication? Douglas Walker has stated that the nostalgia critic is essentially a human version of Daffy Duck. In layman's terms, it's a character that he's portraying. You ever notice that if you act a certain way, some people might think you're on drugs or medication? What's wrong with acting eccentric just for the sake of being eccentric? Good lord, who knew a dolphin punch was so deadly? Why can't we get those things at Pearl Harbor? They would have saved the day. Oh, we shall bomb the harbor and- OH MY GOD, GIANT DOLPHIN! Assuming that a dolphin can jump that high. Wow! I did not know that Shitty McNitpick does commentaries. So it turns out not only do the dog and the dolphin like each other, but they can also communicate with each other. <laughs> Something tells me that he really likes the joke. This, of course, leads to more quirky, awkward talk from our romantic leads. Everything you have said pointed that Zeus and Roxanne were in love. And now you're saying the main romantic lead is Gutenberg and Mary Beth. Well, if anything, the whole dog and dolphin relationship just feels like a gimmick in order to get people to fill in seats. Mary Beth and Gutenberg seem to hit it off quite well by the movie standards. For the rest of us, it's like watching a bad episode of Blind Date. This, uh, this Claude guy. Do you see him? Every day. He's a head honcho at the Institute. Mm. I used to be his assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know why the screen cuts off. I guess it's widescreen to full screen or something. It's cool, baby. I still love you. But we had a parting of the ways. Would it be tactless to ask over what? Third party. Oh, I'm, I, I apologize. Never mind. I, I didn't. I didn't a dolphin. You were talking about how the villain takes too long to talk about his grant, and yet at the same time, now you're talking too much about blind date. I mean, we got the joke. It's one thing to see how many jokes you can fit in the style of a blind date episode at the movie's expense. And it's another thing to have the villain just stand there going, I'll tell you what she's doing. She's trying to steal my grunt. Well, that's just not going to happen. No, sir. So after Gutenberg and Mary Beth make it to first base, we... I'm surprised he didn't complain about the kid's poker scene for 10 minutes. Can you blame him? He can't see there, can't see there, no he can't see there, but... He has to stop making Lady Gaga references. See our villain trying to sneak a peek at her research. <laughs> what is he doing with his lips? What, he turned a beaker from the Muppets for a second? <laughs> My assumption is that he was mumbling inaudibly. If you think this is annoying, then check out his commentary on Zach Galifianakis. At what age do you tell a highway it was adopted? <laughs> I think around seven, because they start thinking, I don't look like the Kiwanis Club. I think you're getting highways and orphans mixed up, because last time I checked, highways were not sentient beings. Hey, speaking of which, we haven't seen much of them, have we? I mean, we're at the hour mark here, and we've only had two scenes with the animals together. One was only ten minutes, and the other was under five. They should have just called this movie Gutenberg and Mary Steenburgen look-alike. That would have been more accurate. Remember that he said that. Um, okay. Intermission. Check this shit out! Intermission over. Are we doing this for us? Are we doing this for the Rockland Foundation? Are we doing it for the kids? All of the above. I don't know. I think you missed a line. You're supposed to say a many second thought, you're supposed to say why, and then you say, okay, you don't know. Maybe Gutenberg means that he's not sure whether or not they really are doing it for all of the above. So, in other words, he's having second thoughts. So, because Gutenberg doesn't know, he decides he wants to move away and take Zeus and Jordan with him. This leads to the most groundbreaking question that this movie, no, no, any movie has ever asked in the history of man. If a dog and a dolphin can get along, why can't our mom and his dad? God, it was so simple all this time. The dog and the dolphin. We must look to the dog and dolphin. Yes, quickly, get me everybody in the world. They all need to hear this. If a dog and a dolphin can get along, why can't our mom and his dad? So he's talking to some guy, and then out of the phone comes the if a dog and a dolphin line. Logically, he would have played like some sound speaker right next to the phone, and the sound speaker would say the line, right? Because he's trying to tell him, not us, about that line. I mean, it's not like the person that he's talking to, and the if a dog and a dolphin line sound wherever it came from, from the other side of the phone, are sharing the same phone, are they? This is beyond shitty McNitpick territory. His videos are supposed to give the impression that he's watching the movie and giving his reaction towards the camera in the same direction. So when he's calling people in order to hear what the movie just said, he's pointing it forward so that the people on the other line can hear what he just heard. Yes, I know! Let them know! Let them all know. dramatic only works if the content that you're working on is overly dramatic about such a small thing as well. 
For example, you're being overly dramatic about this movie. I could play to the vault all over again if you want me to. Being overly dramatic about something that isn't overly dramatic happens all the time in comedy. The contrast between the two makes people laugh. Also, JOKE! If anything, that whole ordeal was to emphasize how dumb of a line that was. I don't even get it. Why couldn't they just leave the dog? This makes no sense. A gigantic scientific breakthrough totally destroyed because Gutenberg doesn't know what he's looking for. <laughs> you yourself said it looked stupid. And now you're saying, oh, it's a scientific breakthrough. Hooray. You confuse me, critic. Even if the premise of a dog and a dolphin falling in love is stupid, the movie treats it as a scientific breakthrough that these two animals can fall in love with each other. But even if you can see past the concept of a dog and a dolphin being ridiculous, someone would still be confused as to why Gutenberg wouldn't just leave the dog. They aren't injecting the dog with anything, they're not putting him through animal testing or all that stuff. They're just observing the communication skills between a dog and a dolphin. Here's the problem with Shadowstar, the movie hardly explains why they're in love, it just concentrates more on the human characters than the dog and the dolphin. That's why your Spider-Man comparison falls flat, because at least Spider-Man does a lot with this concept. Once again, there's concept, and then there's execution. Right. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Mm, not a bad plan to sabotage the competition, but I like his other one better. Now that would be awesome! I'm gonna ask you to stop. Two characters are played by the same actor, but they're two different characters. That was like the second time he mentioned that. It wasn't like he did that throughout the entire review. So as the bad guy tries to lure Roxanne in, we find that Roxanne is one step ahead of their game. Dolphin! How come you didn't say that that looked so fake? Well, he was too busy saying Dolphin Punch! Plus, I think he has enough confidence in his viewers to find that out on their own. I think she wants you to follow her. Uh, yeah, I think she also said bring an oxygen tank, you dumbass. Oh, hold on! I can't stay down any long, because I didn't bring an oxygen tank! <laughs> A knife. Uh, critic, he went up for a knife. Oh, he knows. He was just pointing out that Gutenberg is saving someone underwater, and he didn't even think to bring an oxygen mask. And he's on a boat owned by a marine biologist. Someone who you may assume owns an oxygen mask, considering that she does most of her studies underwater, so... Whoop, gotta go up again! You know, maybe I could save precious time if I just put on one of those oxygen tanks. Or maybe even brought one down for you to breathe through. But what do I know? I'm Steve Gutenberg. Okay, now he went up for air. Yeah, but maybe he could have gone up for an oxygen... Why do I even try? This film is shit planet We don't see much of the dog and dolphin together. The you spent about a total of one-third of the video, which is about... Six minutes complaining about how the dog and the dolphin are together, and then at the very end, you turn around and say, Oh, the dog and the dolphin aren't together so much. If the premise of a movie is supposed to be a dog and a dolphin having a relationship, then they should concentrate more on the dog and dolphin's relationship. But let's be honest, what can you do with a premise like that? It's pretty weak to begin with. Shadowstar, I know that you're entitled to your opinion and all, but... Why do you feel it necessary to defend a movie that doesn't even seem to care about its own premise? This movie is nothing more than a Hollywood cash in with family movie cliché stuff into it. I'm the nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to! Just like CGS 01's Shadow the Hedgehog review, this video completely smashed what credibility I had in you. Even if I didn't watch the movie, or if I didn't like it as a kid, I probably still would have made the commentary. All you do is make bestiality jokes every single turn. Every turn? Well, we must have been watching two different reviews. And can you blame him for making fun of the movie? It's a dog and a dolphin. You might as well go with an alligator and a rabbit. And then, at the very end, you say, Oh, there isn't enough bestiality. 
Seriously. If they were going to have an odd concept in the first place, then they might as well have gone somewhere with it. But they hardly did. It just seems like an odd family safe device to get Gutenberg and marine biologists together. And yes, I don't remember their names because I don't want to. Well, I guess we all learned a viable lesson today. You can have an odd concept, but it all depends on how you execute that concept. Also, it's a dog and a dolphin! I'm Madison Skull. I commented on it so you don't have to. You saw what I did there? I was trying to be cute and funny.